Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your son Jesus who came and gave himself for us. Father, please anoint my lips with your spirit. Open our ears and we may hear what you have to say to us this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with me to John 3, 16 and 17, if you would, please. John 3, 16 and verse 17. Give me an amen when you get there. John 3, 16, 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. God so loved that he gave. He gave the best gift that heaven had to offer. You and I, we will never fully understand this gift. We will never understand the sacrifice that was made in order to buy our pardon. Think about it with me for a moment. The king of the universe, the one that adoring angels love to worship, and they do his bidding with joyful hearts. The king adored throughout worlds untold, laid down his crown. He traded it in for a manger in a stable so that you and I would have the opportunity to make a choice. Jesus chose to give up the worship of ador- worship and adoration of the heavenly angels to come to this world to live as a poor, humble carpenter. Jesus chose to leave the glory of glories, where all was peace and harmony, to come down here to be ridiculed, abused, mistreated, and crucified by the very ones that he came to save. Heaven gave all so that you and I could choose to surrender all to Jesus. Or we could choose to serve self and serve the enemy of heaven. You and I, because of God's amazing love, have been provided an opportunity to make a choice. We can choose to love God back and live for Him, or we can choose to follow the snake. What will you choose today? Please turn me to 1 John 4 and verse 10. 1 John 4 and verse 10. Give me an amen when you get there. 1 John 4 and verse 10. In this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation, what in the world does that mean? Who can give me a word or phrase so that everybody can understand propitiation? Equal. Anybody else? Sacrifice. Anybody else? What's that? Love. Love. All right. Merriam-Webster defines propitiation as the act of gaining or regaining the favor or goodwill of something or someone. The word propitiation is actually derived from two separate Hebrew terms or ideas. The first of which is to make one clean, and the second is to cover something over. So propitiation is the act of washing and cleansing you from sin and then covering you so that that penalty of sin does not fall on you. Please turn with me to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21. Give me an amen when you get there. He made him who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness 
of God in him. God's love for you and I took perfect, the perfect sinless king, the Lord of lords, and made him what you and I are. God's love said, let me make an exchange with you. He said, let me make perfection horrible, rotten, and stinky. And because the perfect sinless one became the wretch, you and I are now free to choose to become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ, if we so desire. You are free to choose to surrender all to the one who loves you and died to save you, the one that gave his all for you, or you can choose his enemy. Which will you choose? Who will you serve? There are only two options, either Jesus or the enemy of Jesus. Who will you choose today? There are only two options, either the lamb or the snake. Who are you going to choose today? Will you choose to be the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ? Or will you choose to join forces with the enemy of souls, the serpent of old? God has showed you that he loves you perfectly and completely. Turn with me to Romans 5 and verse 8. Romans 5 verse 8. Give me an amen when you get there. Romans 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. The king has traded places with the slaves. The slaves are free to inherit eternal life at the cost of the life of the king. You are now free to make a choice. Will you embrace your freedom? Or will you say to the king, no thank you, I enjoy my slavery too much to give it up. For you. Please turn with me to John 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 13. 13. Give me an amen when you get there. John 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, that a person lay down his life for his friends. Let me ask you a question. Is Jesus your friend? Or is he just a name in an old dusty book that sits on a shelf somewhere in your house? Let me ask you another question. Do you love Jesus enough to lay your life down for him? Jesus loved you enough to set aside his royal crown. He set aside his royal robe and he became sin on your behalf. What will you do with Jesus? Will you accept his call that he makes in Matthew 11 verse 28 where he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. The love of God is free for all who will choose to accept it. There is never Anyone that has turned away, that has been turned away from the love of God. Are you willing to lay down your selfish, self-driven life so that you can have a new life in Jesus Christ? Think about it for a moment. If you are not living for Jesus, then who are you living for? You are living for self. Are you willing to lay your life at the foot of the cross and give him permission to use you as a vessel to carry his love to the world around you? Greater love has no one than this, that he or she will lay down their life for their friend. Is God your friend? Is Jesus your friend? Are you willing to lay down all of your plans, all of your desires, all of your aspirations for Jesus? 
Are you willing to say, here I am, Lord, use me for your honor? Are you willing to say, Lord, here I am, use me for your glory? Please turn with me to Romans 8, 38 and 39. Romans 8, 38 and 39. Give me an amen when you get there. Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither depth, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is nothing in all of God's created world, in the universe, nothing will separate you from God's love, is what the verse says. However, living in your sin will separate you from your God. If you continue living a life for self, saying, what's in it for me? And the only thing you seek is what's good for number one. Then you will separate yourself from your God. To continue to seek first above all, I'm sorry, to continue to seek to be first and above all, to try to have your way all the time, to want to be on top looking down at everyone is the only way to be separated from your God. Please turn with me to Isaiah 14, 13 through 15. Isaiah 13, uh, 14, 13 through 15. Give me an amen when you get there. Still here a couple pages wrestling. Don't want to run ahead of anybody. Isaiah 14, 13 to 15. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will rise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Nevertheless, you will be brought down to Sheol, to the recesses of the pit. The snake has already tried and failed, but he wants to make you think that where he failed, you can succeed. He wants to see you attempt what he could not accomplish. He wants you to, be <clears throat> to put the created things above the Creator. The enemy wants you to put yourself first and others last. But what does Jesus say? Please look with me at Luke uh, 13, verse 30. Luke 13, verse 30. Give me an amen when you get there. Luke 13, verse 30. Luke 13, verse 30. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. Those who put self first and step on others to get to the top will find themselves at the bottom. The enemy of God's kingdom is the, <coughs> sorry, the economy of God's kingdom is the economy of service. In the kingdom of God, love reigns supreme. However, the serpent wants to make you think that you can succeed where he has failed. He wants to make you think that getting on top at the expense of others is the best plan. The snake wants you to strive for things and more things, and after you have those things, some more things, rather than striving for holiness of character. He wants you to continue putting things of this world before your relationship with your Creator and Redeemer, so that you will be separated from Him for eternity. However, even if you continue in your sin, it will not stop Him from loving you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. God's love for you is eternal. God's love for you will never fail. God's love for you will never fade. God's love for you is untangible. God's love for you is unmatched. 
God's love for you is unquenchable. God's love for you is unstoppable. God's love for you is unimaginable. But the question you must ask yourself today is this. What am I going to do with the love of God? What will you do with the one who loves you and died to save you? Are you going to accept it and surrender your all to him? Or are you still having too much fun in the world and you don't want God to get in the way and mess up your fun? Please turn with me to Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Give me an amen when you get there. Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Ezekiel 33, verse 11. As I say to them, as I live, declares the Lord God, I take no pleasure at all in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. Why then should you die, house of Israel? Turn back, turn back. Why should you die, house of Pinion? Turn back, turn back from seeking the things of this world before seeking your God. Turn back, turn back. Stop putting your job, your friends, your education, your career before your God. Turn back, turn back. Stop putting your phone before Jesus is what the cry of the loving God is for you today. Turn back. Turn back from seeking the world before it's too late. Turn back, turn back to your God while there is still time. Amen. Turn back, turn back to the one who loves you. Turn back, turn back. He is waiting with open arms. All you have to do is turn to him. Amen. Turn back, turn back. There is nothing that you have done that his love will not forgive if you confess and surrender all to him. There is no reason for anyone to be lost. All can find forgiveness and healing in the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. God does not want anyone to die, but rather that he would turn from his sin and live. God does not desire the death of any, but rather that she would forsake her sin and live. God is not some evil dictator sitting up on a throne waiting and watching, just hoping that you will make a mistake so he can go zap, gotcha. God says in Isaiah 49, 16, he says, Behold, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. In Jeremiah 31, 3, he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you out with kindness. But even with all of God's love, there is still one reality you cannot ignore. Please turn with me to Romans 6 and verse 23. Romans 6 and verse 23. Give me an amen when you get there. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The reality is that the wages of sin is death. There is no escaping that reality. Sin is the unwillingness to trust God and to take Him at His word. And because of that lack of trust in a loving God, death has reigned on planet Earth since the fall of our first parents, Adam and Eve. But that is only the first half of this verse, because the love of God for you and I, there has been made a way that we do not have to die. What does the second half of the verse say? The gracious gift 
of the loving God is eternal life to all who will surrender their heart and will to Him. We may die the first death. We may rest in Jesus until He comes. But we have no need to fear the second death. The love of God has given the life of the Son so that His death takes the place of yours. So that you can live and have His life that only belong to Him. The key is that you must choose to accept the gift and surrender your all to Him. You can hold nothing back. It must be a full surrender. Please turn with me to Ezekiel 18, 32, and let's listen to the plea of the God of love to His wayward children. Ezekiel 18, verse 32. For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God. Therefore, repent and live. What does God say? I have no pleasure in the death of anyone. God loves you so much. He does not want to let you die. He is pleading with you. Please, please turn from your sin. He is pleading with you, repent and live. But for as much as he loves you, he will never force you to make a choice. He will never force you to choose him. But he will give you every opportunity that he possibly can. And since he will not force you, he is pleading. He is pleading, choose me, choose me. Have you ever, <coughs> excuse me, have you ever watched a bunch of kids on a playground as they're choosing teams. You have a captain over here and you have a captain over here and everybody knows this captain's better. So all the kids are, pick me, pick me, come on, pick me, pick me, 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 because they know who's going to win. God is pleading with you. He knows who's going to win. He's saying, pick me, I'm the winner. Pick me, pick me. Will you choose to accept the propitiation that has been so pre freely provided for you? Will you choose to be washed clean from your sins? Will you choose to be covered by the blood of the Lamb? Will you choose to be covered by the blood of the King of glory, the King of kings, Lord of lords, so that the penalty for your sin does not fall on you? Will you choose Jesus today?